Well, hello everybody, Don Balance here with another Facebook Live tutorial here on Tuesday from New Tech in San Antonio. And today we're going to talk about making animated buffers for use in your New Tech video productions. Now, uh, the TriCaster comes with an application called the Animation Store Creator. This version of the TriCaster has Advanced Edition on it, so it has Animation Store Creator Advanced Edition, which is what we're going to use. So we'll go ahead and enter the application. And this application allows you to create transitional effects, the animation store transition effects, or animated buffers. So right up here in the top, you have a pull down that allows you to choose what type of effect you're going to be making. And we're going to choose animated buffer. And now we're ready to go ahead and bring in the content that we're going to use. Now, animation store creator isn't the place where I create the content. It's the place where I take that content and I transform it into an, a file format that the TriCaster can use in its live production. So the content that we're going to be bringing in was actually made in After Effects and or a 3D package like Lightwave. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of different types of anim buffers. The first one, I'm just going to say I want to select the file and I'm going to go out and find my content here. We'll go ahead and we'll click on the very first frame of the sequence and load it. Ah, 300 frames are. Now, it's telling me that anything over 300 frames is going to be greater and very large and can quickly take up your system memory. So it's basically giving me the option to uh, use a less amount of frames. But again, between 300 and 500 is where you want to be. We'll go ahead and say load. It's going to go ahead and load these 500 frames for us. Now, depending upon how long your image sequence is, it may take a while to load. So please be patient. So once we have the image sequence loaded, we can actually scrub through it using our little time bar down here. And this is just kind of a background animation that we use to put other things over the top of in our production. And I've got a few variables here. This came in. We're going to render this out at 29.9 frames per second. But you can change the frame rate for things like PAL and other frame rates that you might want to use. We're going to keep 29.97. Uh, this is not interlaced content. If it was, I can turn this on. And you would actually see in the preview if it was interlaced and it wasn't going to render properly. You would see the fields. And just by turning that button on, it cleans it up right in the preview. So you know it's correct. Now, there are three different modes that you can create an anim buffer in. The single mode is going to run the anim buffer one time and stop and hold on that last frame. Now, the loop mode is going to, of course, loop it. So you want to make sure it's a looping animation in here. Otherwise, there's going to be a part where it resets and starts again. So this is a looped animation sequence that we have in here. So it will loop seamlessly for us. Now, one other type of anim buffer is the ping pong. And this is where it's going to run forward and then backward and then forward. So if you needed to make, a, say, a logo that's kind of rocking back and forth in the corner, you would only have to animate one rock, turn on ping pong, and the anim buffer will rock back and forth for you. But for this particular one, we're going to make it a looping anim buffer. Now, right down here, you have the ability uh, to choose the quality of the anim buffer. And this is not only the resolution, but the amount of memory it's going to take up, the system memory inside of your production system. So uh, most of the time, I render mine at high. Even if I'm working at 1080, uh, I still go ahead and render them at high. You can render them at ultra and try yourself. And uh, then you can decide whether the visual difference is worth the amount of RAM or the amount of system memory that's going to take up in your production. So I'm going to set this to high. And then I can also choose a icon to use as the effect. So I can go ahead and pick an icon that I like and click on that button. It'll go ahead and choose that. And that will be the icon that represents this anim buffer once we get it into our production system. Now, to get this out to our TriCaster, we're going to say export to this TriCaster. And as soon as I do that, it's asking me to save the project. Now, this is not saving or rendering the anim buffer. This is the project inside of Animation Store Creator. So it could be reloaded and modified if we should so desire. So I'll just go ahead and call this background. Uh, that's fine. And I'm going to say save. And it is now rendering the actual animated buffer to the TriCaster. The saving of the project just takes a second, and it's, you don't even see it happen. 
Now this animation buffer has been exported out to the TriCaster that we're actually running Animation Store Creator on and it's ready for use out there. Another option would be to create an installer and you could create an installer, put it on say a thumb drive or a movable drive and then take it around to any number of TriCasters and install that animated buffer on those TriCasters as well. Now this is an animated buffer that is full screen, so there's no transparency, but of course animated buffers can also be made with transparency, and let's take a look at how we would do that. I'm going to come up to the file pull down here and just say new and start over again, and we're going to say we want to make an animated buffer, and we're going to go find our image files that we're going to use. And this time I'm going to use a animated sequence that has alpha channel built into it. So again, I don't have to change or, or denote this in any way. I just select the first file, and this is a PNG file. It does have alpha channel built into it. And I go ahead and it's telling me again. It's telling me that it's over 300 frames, so it's going to be big. That's okay. And I go ahead and start it off, and it creates the animated, or it loads the sequence for me to create the buffer with. Now I have a uh, scrub bar down here. Again, this is just a logo with an animated glint traveling across it. And again, this is made to be loopable so that you'll have a nice clean transition when this loops over and over again. So I would want to set this up as a loop. I would also want to go ahead and set its icon so it's represented properly. And I will render this out at high as well. And this is ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and export this to this TriCaster. Again, it's going to ask me to save it. I'll save it as logo 24. and that will be exported to the TriCaster for use. Now, we have both of those projects saved. We could load them back up here, make modifications, and re-export them if we want to. I'm just going to go ahead and exit out. This is going to take me back to the home page. And from the home page, I can go ahead and open up one of my uh, projects or my sessions that I want to go into here. And I'm going to load those animated buffers up into my buffers. I have one and one. I'm going to load into number two here. And again, to find these, I'm going to find the uh, animated buffers, which are down here at the bottom. And if I go down to user, we can see the two animated buffers that we recently created. I'll load up the first one. And that is our full page overlay buffer with no transparency in it at all. And that I have loaded up right here in this overlay. We can see that that is overlaying over the top. And if I went ahead and looked at the actual uh, overlay over top of a background, you can see that it is completely opaque. It completely obscures the background. And that was what we intended with that animated buffer. Now, with this other one, we're going to load it up. And that is represented right here. And when I bring this forward, you can see that this has alpha channel built into it. So we now have the alpha channel coming through in the animated buffer. Looks great, and it's ready for use. So as you can see, the included application, Animation Store Creator, makes it pretty simple to create animated buffers for use in your TriCaster and NewTek live video productions. Well, I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you, and if you have suggestions or topics you'd like covered, please put them in the comments below. And we'll see you again next Tuesday for another live Facebook tutorial.